In this video, we're going to be looking at an introduction to candlesticks. We'll look to read candlesticks. We'll look to understand the importance of using open, high and low and closing data. And we will look to also understand sentiment and momentum and why there are the instances of such terms in a basis of understanding candlestick patterns. So let's begin. Let's start by looking at how we can read candlesticks. And a candlestick can either be white or black. So we've got the white one there, we've also got the black one here. Sometimes other colors can also be used though, like green and maybe red. You can do whatever you want, as long as there's a color option with your chart platform provider. But it's conventional to use black and white. But it doesn't really matter which colors you use, so long as you can distinguish between the two. So in this case, we'll be using black and white just for the purpose of this video. So each candlestick shows the price action within a specified time interval. So for example, one candle may represent one day or another may represent five minutes. You can set this yourself once again with your chart platform well, your provider. So things like trading view in the modern day. And when the net movement of price in that interval that we mentioned is upwards, the candle is white. We'll use in our example when the net movements is up. Let's just say it opens here, closes here, that closed up. That for us is a white candle. If it opens at a price here and then closes here, closing down for the day, we will have it as a black candle. Just remember that too. Candlesticks are made up of four prices, open, high, low, and close. The thicker part of the candlestick, this is the thicker part on this one, and this is the thicker part on this one. They are the same. This is called the real body, and it marks the open and close prices. You've got the open there, and you've got the close. You've got the open here and the close, because in this case, the candle's up. In this case, the candle is down. These are the very first and the very last prices recorded in the interval respectively. So when the close is higher than the open, the real body is white, remember, or unfilled. And when the close is lower than the open, the real body is black or filled in. And beyond the real body, you have a thinner line and that marks the highest and lowest prices recorded. These are commonly referred to as tails, shadows, or wicks. For reference here, you have the high plotted there and the low plotted there. And it's the same on both, really. You've got the high plotted there, the wick, or the, the tail or the shadow is shown there for the high, and this is the low. So we should probably also note that not all candlesticks have shadows. So if a white candle closes at the highest price, for example, it will not have an upper shadow. And if it also opened at its lowest price, it would not have a lower shadow either. So why use candlesticks? What is the benefit of actually using candlesticks? Well, a really important benefit is that they're constructed using open, high, low, close data, which means all price data gets recorded efficiently. You may not know, but other chart types like line charts emit very important bits of data for your price data, which can cause serious difficulties as we'll see shortly. Candles are also one of the best types of charts for clearly showing levels of price rejection, support and resistance. The open and close values really just show the price in a snapshot of time when the candle opened or closed. These can be important, especially over long time frames like daily, weekly or monthly candles, but the high and low prices from shadows show reversals and levels of supply and demand in the market. These can be really important levels of support and resistance, so it's a really important feature in candlestick analysis. Also, candlestick patterns which repeat in all markets can provide precise filters for market entries and exits, which can be a really useful addition to other methods of technical analysis. Let's look at why it's so important to make sure all price data is getting plotted. This is a typical line chart of Rolls-Royce shares. Each point represents a day 
a day's worth of trading data. A line chart only plots one price for day. You don't have different ranges like we shown we shown before with candlesticks. But in this case, in a line chart, you only have one price per day. That can only plot one of either the open, the high, the low, or the close, or some average of them rather. That could be another option too. But most typically, just closing prices will be plotted. The problem with that is that it ignores all of the price action which occurs within the day before the close. This is often the most important market action where highs and lows form. Look at the peak in this chart, for example. We've got an arrow we could probably bring up. There we go. That peak, do you think that is showing the actual market top? Well, no, it's not. It's only showing the highest close. The actual price top could have been much higher intraday. And the same is true of the troughs. The actual lows could have been much lower. Look at the difference when we look at the same chart in candlestick format. Let's bring that up real quick. The actual lows could also be lower, but let's bring up the candlestick version of this same chart. Let's go back. You've got the closing point, which is quote unquote the highs for this graph. And you've got the low point, which is quote unquote the lows for this graph. Then you switch it to candlestick format. There were highs made on top of that close point and there were lows made below that. Interesting. So now by looking at this graph, it's the same chart, a daily but in candlestick format instead of line graph format. By looking here, we can see the actual tops and bottoms. We can still see the important close prices from tops and bottoms of the real bodies, but we can also see the extremely important levels of price rejection at the actual highs and lows from the shadows at peaks and troughs. This chart shows all of the price information. None of it is omitted. So at that point, you can see there was a point of rejection. Although we had a close at a high, there was a point of interesting rejection and the price reversed straight after that. At the point of lows, there was a point where the lows were made in and the price closed significantly above that point. It's interesting because you wouldn't see this bottom wick area on a line chart. It's important to remember that with open high, low close data. So to illustrate why it's so important to ensure price data is included, all price data must be included. Look at this example. This is another chart of Rolls Royce with a tool called a price containment envelope imposed. Suppose we've noticed that the price tends to re reverse from the lower envelope band, which we can show here. And we're looking to buy it the next time it declined from the black arrows point. Our chart is saying the price never touched the lower band. And so we would never have entered the trade. But in actual fact, if we go to the next diagram, the price did touch that band, but it didn't close there. So if you were using a line graph, you would have never entered the trade. If you were using this method with a candlestick pattern, or for each candle being shown by a candlestick rather than a line graph point, then you would have been in the trade, which is interesting. The share price fell down to that lower band, which provided a good buying opportunity to ride it up to this central band we've got here. Because the only closing price is plot, well, only the closing price is plotted in the line chart, as we mentioned before. We didn't really even know at that point that the price had actually tested the lower band, as shown with this chart that uses candlesticks rather than the line points of a line graph. And by not using OHLC data, you can miss some of the most important information like this. And the most important concept in candlestick analysis, which lays the foundation for the rest of this series, is that they can be viewed as a visualization of investor psychology. Candlesticks show the changing balance of power between bullish market participants and bearish ones, which can give us as technical analysts a great insight into momentum behind trends. So look at the two candlestick formations we have on screen as an example. They both have exactly the same real bodies. Look, they have the same real bodies in terms of size. This one is the same size as this one. This one has the same difference as this one and this one accordingly 
is the same, but both saw a strong advance in price. However, the candlestick seemed to show something a little bit different. By looking at the candlesticks, you can see there's a wick on top. With the one on the left, there are no or very small upper shadows. This is a very small one, but on the other two, you can see this one, the second candle, and this on the third, there are no upper wicks. And, and there are really only short lower shadows. And this shows that bullish market participants are thoroughly in control of the market. They've been able to drive up the price with very little resistance from bearish market participants. There has been very little selling pressure in this case to oppose that strong buying pressure that has forced up the price. But for the candles in the right, as we just mentioned, although there was a lot of bullish activity still here, we see much larger upper wicks. Look, some sign of rejection, a sign that maybe there were a lot more sellers at those higher price levels. And it shows that momentum is not as completely bullish as for the candles on the left as it is here on the right. That doesn't seem to be as much bullish behavior in terms of price action on the right versus the left. The longest upper shadow on the last candle on the right, which is shown here, could be a sign that sellers are increasingly entering the market. Sentiment is shifting towards more negativity and a reversal to the downside may be likely. It could also be interpreted as healthy profit taking in a stable uptrend. So don't uh, clearly define it in all situations, but it's clear in this case that candlesticks give more information about the balance of power between buyers and sellers, which isn't available from other chart types. So to conclude, it's really important to ensure that all price information is being plotted on a chart. Candlesticks are a very efficient way of plotting OHLC data, which also makes it clear to visualize investor sentiment. In the rest of this series, we'll go through a variety of candlestick patterns, looking at what they tell us about sentiment and momentum, as well as how they can be used as filters for order execution.